Hi, Otangelo. How are you? Yes. Hello. I'm fine. Thanks, and you? Good. Good. So, what's up? Yes, I'm curious. You you say you have uh, five reasons that um, refute God's existence, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. give me the best five one. very simple reasons. Okay. So five give very, me the yeah. best one. I think all of them are best, but I think uh, if God is just sitting and watching all the evil happening in the world, this means that we don't have a God that can claim to be absolutely good. And this is what the God of Christianity or other Abrahamic religions claim to be. So this means that if we have a God even, that is not the God of Abrahamic religions. That's someone else. Okay, can it be that God has good reasons to permit evil in the world? But still, that wouldn't make him absolutely good. How does that follow? Yeah, because problem is any person who compromises with evil is still not omnipotent. Because well, God but you didn't answer my question. Um, yeah. Can God have good reasons to permit evil? Maybe, but you can explain those reasons to me and then we will decide if there are good reasons or not. Well, the thing is, God could prevent evil in the world. And what would be the solution? The, the solution would be that he would create creatures which have no free will. And then you would basically have creatures which are pre-programmed always to do good, to do what um, is uh, in conformation with, with God's character, which is good. So that would be the solution. But once you remove free will, you remove also... Uh, love and I think the, the main reason that God created this world is to permit the possibility to have a loving relationship with us and once you remove free will you cannot instantiate that relationship anymore and I think this was the reason why God decided to make creatures with free will and, and assumed the risk that people would do bad things yeah, then this means that then God is basically lying. Because then he should not say that he is absolutely good. Because he's not. Because let's say there is someone who is in absolute power and then evil happens under their nose, then they are responsible for that. So maybe we can agree that God is responsible for all the evil that happens in the world, but you know, maybe he then you can say that he has other reasons for accepting evil. But still, he is responsible. This is what I am telling you. And But the claims are very different because God does not accept responsibility for any kind of evil. Especially the well, is, there, is, the, is the responsibility upon the person which decides to commit evil or is the responsibility on God which permits evil to happen? Yeah, the responsibility rests on both. Responsibility rests on both <coughs> and more yeah, so I on the person is... who is more powerful, more so on the person who is more yeah. powerful. That is, that is where we disagree. I think the responsibility is upon the person which decides to, to commit evil and not on God. Because God has given us the commands in order that we follow them and do good. But he has also given us free will and we yeah, can but, you know, but rules. I think that... We can even say that responsibility rests more on the more, more on God rather than the person. And we can, I have a reasoning for that as well. Why? Because a person is confined by his situation. A person is basically tuned by his upbringing. A person is bound to his circumstances. So even in that case, more responsibility lies on God rather than the person who's committing things. Because in the first place, let's say a person, a, a God would, you know, it's God who is deciding where someone is going to be born. And God makes, you know, a, gives a daughter to a prostitute and she also makes her a prostitute. So the responsibility of putting that woman in a situation where she become, she automatically becomes a prostitute rests more on God rather than that girl. Yeah. When God did put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, 
and he commanded them not to eat from the fruit of, of knowledge. Um, they did not have a fallen nature. They were absolutely free to follow God's command and to obey him. And it was their free decision to give ears to the serpent, which um, told them that they would become knowledgeable and know what is good and wrong. And they decided freely to, to disobey God. So God had absolutely no responsi responsibility in their fall. It was something which was resting absolutely in 100% upon their decision. So God was not responsible for that. He didn't give them a fallen nature, which they would have to actually decide to do evil. They could have perfectly decided to obey God and they didn't. So it is not God's responsibility that they disobeyed and that doesn't make God evil. Okay, so Tangelo, can I ask you a, just a very simple personal question? It's not going to go into your personal life. Go ahead. Have you ever signed an informed consent form in your life? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Did you ever sign an informed consent form in your life? Whenever you sign up for something, for a surgery, even oh, if you yes, go for yes, a dental yes, procedure, yes, sure. they make you mm. sign an <clears throat> informed consent form. Right, right. Yes. yes Did you I ever have. do that? Yes. And, and what does that say most of the times? Well, that I agree with the, with the conditions in the form, right? And it tells you about the consequences, the possible side effects that can have that you can face because of the surgical procedure, and and no one is going to and and the doctor and the hospital and the staff that is performing that are not going to be responsible for the consequences that you face. So right, yes. So you said that God made they made the decision, but did they make an informed decision? Do you think yes. that they what fully understood? No, they, did, did they did no no just let me complete it. Did Adam and Eve know that what the actual what the actual consequences of being being in that situation with God asked them not to be in would be? Yes. No, no. Yes. Tell me, I, I challenge you in the chapter in the first chapters of Genesis, God only told them. Okay, you would die. Correct. That's all. And even in that, God lied because they did not die. They died spiritually and then they died physically. But that's but that's that's an interpretation that you are doing. But God in plain language said that you would die the day when you eat from the fruit of this tree. And they did not die. They died? No, they did not die. They did, they did not die. die they, not? they did not die immediately. But the consequence yeah. was that they died. We still die today. And they also no. died spiritually because they had a close um, relationship with God. God came every day to have a, a personal talk with them. Yeah, but that's and an interpretation. This means that, and secondly, when I brought this argument from the informed consent form into it, God did not did not give them any kind of understanding of the situation when he even said that you would die he did not properly tell them that what actually was going to happen he said that they would die and the consequence yeah, he said that they would that... die but they did not die so in a okay, literal I... sense it's still alive okay we have it's just a disagree okay we have a disagreement here and i don't think we will go further than that i think they god didn't lie you think he lied Whatever yeah, you whatever you believe, Khalid. But there there are many other instances in the uh, Old Testament and the New Testament, as especially in the Old Testament, where you can tell other places where God lied. Yeah, the Bible is very clear. God cannot lie, and you are lying about Him. So <laughs> yeah. <you're responsible laughs> you know, you start blaming me for the crimes of God. This is what well, you that's do. your that's Thank your you in my understanding that is your false perception. It doesn't prove that God does not exist. And I don't think that you have given me a knockdown argument, which um, uh, yeah, that, that the audience can you, that the audience can decide that, that God the audience does not exist. Okay. 
Yeah, the only thing, Kalib, that I think you could demonstrate to me that God does not exist would be if you would have a plausible explanation for our existence, which would top intelligence as a causal mechanism, and that would be based on random chance and unguided events. You have not given me that. So I don't does God change his mind? Does me. God change his mind? What? Can God change his mind? Uh, God can change his mind. Uh, no, I don't think God can change his mind. So, do you pray to God? Yes, of course. And and if you do not pray, and if you do pray, does that change the situation or not? I think that God listens to my prayers and he answers them. He answers them. That means that he changes his mind when he answers them. Well, the thing is, Khalib, that upon the biblical understanding that we have, God no, has full knowledge in regards of the entire um, history of the universe. So he knows the future. But so, where it does, is it explicitly mentioned anywhere in the Bible that God does not change your mind because of your prayers? What the Bible says is that God hears our prayers and that he can respond to them positively and attend what we what we de uh, desire in the same sense as every child can come to the father and ask for a gift and the father gives that gift and that is the relationship with which I have with, with my heavenly father and I can come to him and say I have this need please help or Please attend my prayer. And if God reg regards it as something which uh, is beneficial and that he should actually answer, then he does answer as I have experienced. This means he is subject times. to changing his mind. Well, the thing is that it depends on, on the perspective upon which we um, regard this question. If I am telling you that God has full knowledge in regards of everything, that happens in the future, then it means that he knows everything already and he can never be surprised and suddenly um, do something which he didn't know previously that would happen or that he would decide. And I mean, I cannot go deeper than that, but that is my answer. Why I think that. Yeah, but this um, means that this means that God can change his mind and anyone you know, people do change their mind when they have some kind of new information. And anyone who claims to be all-knowing, you know, there's no new information for them. So right, this means right. God is not, not all-knowing. Basically, the simple arguments that I presented today was basically I am showing a contradiction between several contradictions between the properties of God that are claimed by the Abrahamic religion. So yeah, God claims to be all good, but is, still there is evil in the world. God says that he knows everything, but still he is subject to changing his mind. God, you know, God uh, does get sad as well. But when someone gets sad, this means that their emotional state has changed. And if someone knows everything, their emotional state cannot change, you know. So, yeah. I think so that all of these properties reveals, that you have. I believe that God reveals going himself. Over one yeah, let, let me answer to that. I, I think that God, often he speaks in a way that we as limited humans can understand with our limited um, minds. But, um, but that's an argument say, from ignorance. Yeah, 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 let, me, let, that. Me, let me quick finish here. I think this is important for you to understand. Um, the fact that God is all knowing and that he knows all the future is something which is beyond our understanding and the things which you think they are apparently contradiction the contradictions there is a possibility that they are not the contradiction upon a further understanding of the subject maybe we don't have it today but we cannot but we can have it tomorrow but ontologically speaking there is nothing that you have said in this stream Kalib, which substantiates your position 
in a knockdown manner. Now I have a, an argument which knockdowns your argument in a in a in a in a definitive way. The the problem with Angelo is that uh, there are contradictions. There are clear contradictions in the in the philosophical and logical understanding of what you define to be a god. First of all. Secondly, you have used something that people use for science. Now you're using it for logic and philosophy as well. So that thing is okay. Science does not know today, but in the future it would know. But now you're using the same thing for, for philosophy and logic as well. And very simple logic. You are saying that when I told you that there are clear contradictions in the idea of God and its logic, you said, okay, maybe we don't know something today. We would know it in the future, but that's also an argument from ignorance. And, and basically the problem is that you cannot make claims on the basis of something that you don't know. Claims are always based on something that you know. Basically, you take a set premise, premise that is already believed in according to the deductive reasoning as well. You take a premise that is already proven and then from that you infer something that is that uh, 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 infer something and arrive on the conclusion but you are basing your conclusion now on something that is unknown so basically this is just a fallacy an argument from ignorance yeah now yeah. you can say what you want yeah you st you start with the first scenario where you actually try to target the god of the bible and I think this is a wrong epistemological approach. You need to start with a more simple question. Is intelligence required to instantiate the physical universe, life, biodiversity, consciousness, and moral values or not? That is the basic question. Maybe we can exclude now for a moment moral values. But you, you, is intelligence, yeah. let me finish, please. Is intelligence required to instantiate our physical world? Yes or no? This is the this is the ba a basic question, and if you cannot answer it positively, excluding God from the equation, then you have nothing, and you cannot explain our existence without. Yeah, we can you explain things okay, without please. including God. Yes, we okay, can. Please go we ahead. Can. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, do you believe in causality? Do you think causality exists or not? Of course. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Where does the causality come from? It is um, a, an ontological principle that nothing has no causal powers. And uh, does it supersede the universe or it's uh, a property of our universe? Excuse me? Does it supersede our universe or yes. is it a property of yes. our universe? I think it super supersedes our universe. Nothing has no causal how so? powers. How so? How so? Well, Can well, you explain why nothing, it supersedes the universe? Yes, because nothing is by definition the absence of anything. So something cannot come from nothing. Okay. But you think that causality in itself is, is exists independent of this universe? This is what I'm asking. Yes. It does exist independent of this universe. But I am yes. going to tell you that it doesn't exist independent of this universe. Why? Because the principle of causality that was even discovered by the ancient Greek philosophers, or they formalized it, is basically an emergent property of this universe. Causality is an emergent property of this universe. Basically, causality you think is logical and philosophical. But it is not. It is purely empirical and physical in nature. How? Because these philosophers observed causality everywhere in the universe around them. And then they translated it into philosophical and logical language. And then they started to apply it to their own logical arguments. But philosophy, but causality is independent of that. And how so causality is independent of that? And where does causality basically come from. So causality basically arises from exchange of energy in the universe. So what is basically a cause? The principle of causality says that there is a cause and there is an effect. The cause transforms the effect and effect in turn also, uh, also modifies the cause itself. So what happens is 
energy moves out from a region of our universe that region could be a very small region on the scale of planck time or planck space but that could be very large as well where many different you know atoms and quantum particles are emitting energy and it's going into other particles and huge regions of our universe so what happens is basically without the transfer of energy in the universe there is no causality let's say if we halt all the transfer of energy today in our universe the causality would cease to exist and this is going to happen when the universe is going to end because how the universe is going to end today we have a we have a sun and our sun is going to die in 5.5 billion years from now and the sun is dead and in the next 100 trillion or so years all the brown dwarfs and and the and the neutron stars everything would be dead in our universe they would have no energy to emit anymore and then the turn comes to the black holes black holes would continue to emit hawking radiation for googles of years googles of years and after that they are going to explode in huge fireworks and after that there is going to be absolute silence in the universe because nothing in the universe would be able to send out energy and another region in the universe is going to be able to receive energy because everything would be at the same potential so it be the electrical potential the temperature difference or anything at all Khalid, so there would you be have no... just confirmed no, no, no. Wait, that wait, the universe wait, wait, cannot wait, be wait, eternal wait, wait, wait. my 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 reasoning is not complete yet so that would be the end of causality in our universe causality would be dead so if causality dies in the universe this means that it, it also emerged in the universe and we have no reason to believe that universe in itself exists that causality exists without the universe and secondly if causality is a, an emergent property of this universe then you can only cannot even arrive at the conclusion that causality can exist independent of the universe yeah you you are you are doing several logical fallacies here kali first there, of all okay, you okay. just confirmed that the universe will have a heat death there is no physical principle known that reverses the second law of thermodynamics and will restitute the state of affairs at the beginning to to go back to the beginning of the universe where we had a low entropy state that means once the universe is dead it will be dead that is the evidence that we have what does that mean it means that the universe is not eternal in the past it had a beginning if it had a beginning that means that either it was caused into existence by absolutely nothing which is impossible because nothing has no cause of powers or it was caused by something else which is above the physical because it has to be something which explains the physical so you cannot explain the physical no but still, but still but still whatever you are trying to explain here otangelo is on the basis of causality and causality i am telling you is a property of this universe so if you want to apply it to the beginning of the universe you cannot why logically you cannot you are committing the fallacy here why no i am because not causality, no, no, you have to listen to you me would... i think you did not understand what i, I was trying to say okay you do did you not expect... understand what i was trying to say okay do you expect you white not... elephants popping out in your room from nothing no i am not i am not i am not saying anything about the beginning of the universe i am just talking about causality i am not saying i am not making any claims about the beginning of the universe i am just talking about causality here i am saying that if you said that causality exists independent of this universe and you want to prove that that your god can be you know uh, and and you are trying to prove god from causality and i am telling you that causality is an emergent property of this universe it does and you cannot say that it would it would exist independent of the universe this is what i am trying to explain and and on the basis of this emergent property of the universe and if causality is an emergent property of the universe this means that it wouldn't supersede the universe yeah you, so you would only be, be right applying it to something Khalid, you would only you wouldn't be, be able right. to logically apply it to, it to the beginning of the universe 
Caleb, you would only be right if you if you could demonstrate that absolutely nothing has causal powers. That has never been But demonstrated. You claim that. And I don't claim that. I don't claim that. You claim that. Well, you I, are I trying claim to put it. Your I own claim it. Me. Yes, I claim it based on our experience that the principle of, of cause and effect has never been broken. So I am on the evidence so side. So now you are and you the are position. and you are on the speculation side because what I you are saying is side. what you are saying is that basically the universe could pop up out of nothing. By not, I am not saying that. No I am not saying that. Well, that is what you are saying. That. If you are saying, saying that, that you are, you are saying that there is not a part of the universe. We are speaking over one another. We are speaking over one another. You make you, you know, what you do is you in in our previous talk even you, you know, you make absolute claims for me, which I don't make. If you ask me. how the big bang happened how the universe started i don't know my answer is this i don't know and i don't try to make any kind of assumptions on the basis of big bang or any other thing yeah you know my you thing is ignorance no, no, wait, wait, is wait, wait, unjustified wait, wait. You, and i tell you why you don't understand you don't understand what angelo what i'm trying to say here i am no, saying I here you, is you that causality ignorance when you do not have the justification basically so. no i am not justifying anything on the basis of my ignorance you did it earlier i am no. not just trying to justify no. anything on the basis of my ignorance no not at all well, people are listening they can is, even go what? back and listen to this conversation and they would know that i did not make any absolute claims on the basis of ignorance here i did not no. We have, I am very clear in my logic. Yeah. So the problem we, we is not, you started. Not, no, I'll come to your basic question now. Wait, you'd have to listen to me first. So you said that universe would arise. You know, you started this thing. You said that physical existence would require something to create it. So the pro problem is that causality in itself is a an emergent property of physical existence. No, prove it. And how did the physical existence itself that? come into being? We know nothing about that. That, that is, is what I'm unjustified saying. and unbased claim, Galip. If you can, um, we I work based on our experience. We have two scenarios here. One is that we know by experience that the principle of cause and effect has never been broken. And secondly, so we have never observed. Can I finish now, please? and we have never observed that nothing can create something so this is a very clear scenario here and you try to claim that no, because you basically... don't know why why are you interrupting me you 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 talk and talk and then when i try to respond you interrupt me so doesn't okay uh, okay okay so that means that if we have no experience empirical experience that nothing can do something then that is what we lead our inference to and that means that if the principle of cause and effect has always been observed that means that the universe since you confirmed it will have a heat death in the future it cannot go infinitely past in in the uh, yeah, back in the past it must have had a beginning therefore it must have a cause and i say that as a logical inference based on our experience you resorting to ignorance or to say that it doesn't apply to metaphysical state of affairs this is ir illogical unwarranted and you are basically making um uh, 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 claims which, which are logical fallacies no basically you are trying to infer something that is not inferred from that you are saying that as universe is going to have a heat death then it should have had a beginning i have no problem with the beginning but the problem is when you try to extend causality beyond that beginning then i have a problem because you say that universe began and causality exists and that's why universe must have a beginning you know the problem here is that causality is an emergent property of the universe 
and in your logical framework on the basis of which you are saying that universe you know you have to listen to on the basis of which you are saying that the universe must have a cause the problem is causality you don't even know and you have no way of knowing that causality would supersede the universe in any way this is what i am trying to tell yeah, yeah. so the You're only the only wait 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 wait, wait. the only thing that i wanted to tell you was when i explained the heat death of the universe i told you that causality is going to cease to exist one day which means that if let and you are inferring from the heat death of the universe that okay if the universe is going to die in a heat death then it must have had a beginning so from the same logic if causality ceases to exist in the universe then we can say that it it had emerged in the universe in the first place so this is what i am saying and when you apply causality to something beyond the universe then i have a problem with and 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 yeah. on the basis of this you guys try to prove that the universe needed a cause but the problem is causality is an emergent property of this universe that's why you cannot apply causality to the beginning of universe this yeah. is my kali if this is a logical yeah. fallacy you repeat it this is not a logical fallacy this is yes, basically let me answer please let me answer please. we wait wait you this is not you have repeated objection. this not angelo makes, you have repeated this 10 no times sense. that Wait, wait, yeah. Otangelo. It makes no like, sense to repeat you because you insist. Let me complete one sentence, yeah. Otangelo, please. Let me complete one sentence. That sentence is, you have repeated this 10 times. That causality, that I am, I am committing a fallacy. I am not committing a fallacy. I have made an empirical connection of causality to this universe. And this thing is enough to explain that you cannot apply causality beyond the universe. I'm sorry I muted you now you can reply. Yeah. Yeah, it makes no sense to repeat it if you are not capable to understand that nothing has no causal powers then I cannot help you further. I think I yeah, have my, my case van... very clear to the to the audience. Yeah, um, audience can listen to it. No problem. Well, problem. Yeah, I, I, and um, um, you insist that the 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 the, the the principle of causality applies only inside of the universe yeah, i it disagree does, it, does. it doesn't matter if nothing is in or out of the universe nothing is by definition the absence of anything and obviously and logically it cannot cause something into existence which is something which you re refuse to accept that's why i am saying you are illogical you are ir irrational but you start regards, to make these personal and, um, you know you start to uh, tangelo your problem is you start to get personal you know i am not making any kind of personal comments you know in, uh, to you i can do that i can do the same thing i can say that you are ignorant and you don't understand i can say that but i don't why because the discussion should only stay on the point of discussion rather than yeah, trying to discuss you and me and this is what you do this and this from I mean, where from here is what i start to feel that you are getting a little bit irritable here i'm sorry to say that Well, I, I am saying that just in regards of this issue, Galib, and uh, um, uh, not in matter is to in always general. attack the argument rather than the person. You know. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, it is not my intention to attack you as a person or. But or you can you continuously like keep that. doing that again and again. Okay. Last time you did that, uh, the, the time before that you did that, and even right now you're doing that. Okay, okay, but anyway, um, I think that um, you have not no case again. I think yeah, that the okay. universe okay, no um, the display is design. We have uh, machines in, in molecular biology, in, in chemistry, in life. Proteins are molecular machines and machines never oops, arise. I think we should not problem. go into a new arena.